Hello, hello all, um, and, um, and, and, and hello Sophie, thank, thank heavens you're here, thank heavens. <laughs> but I've, I, I spoke last week for two hours to you all about making films and then editing them on the computer. Is there anything that anyone would like to ask about that, that you've tried over the week that you'd like to, um, that maybe cropped up? Or, or do you just want to put that all behind you? <laughs> Um, well, I, I actually did um, purchase the Premiere Pro, and um, I, I do uh, uh, every month. We have a, a West Wales Deaf Church West Wales service online at the moment, and I have been editing thing it in my um, Intelli Studio program, and it's been horrendous. Yes. And I have to say that Premiere Pro was a lot easier. <laughs> um, but, um, I, I couldn't see because I was trying to work out. Um, you said about being able to import and put something as a small um, video within yeah. the video and I couldn't really see how that would work. I don't know whether you could very quickly refresh No, um, right. short so, answer is no I can't um, because I've never done it myself before but that's one of the things that Shirley if you wanted to come to Planet sometime and, and do a bit more sort of intensive uh, sort of work through uh, Premiere Pro, I'd be happy to help you um, okay. if you want to do that sort of thing. Can I just ask as well, when you bought the Premiere Pro, did, was it the one, one, uh, did you buy it just for one cost or, do you have, or did you have no, to subscribe? No, it's, it's a monthly premium. It, it, yeah. the one I thought was looking like it was a, an annual thing, it, it, it isn't it, like a one-off, it wasn't, it was a, it's an annual fee overall. Yeah. So. Okay. yeah. Um, I'll work on, I, I'll, I'll have a look into it though, Shirley, as well, and get back to you, but um, as far as that, but if you want to, if anybody wants to do any training or anything to do with anything to do with um, editing pre, uh, Adobe software, just get in touch, get in touch with Maria, who I'm sure will get in touch with Planet, or get, get in touch with Planet and we can sort something out. Well, um, today, uh, it, I've got the easy job in that I have a guest, a guest uh, presenter. Um, I'll, I'll admit, uh, as far as actually experience with, with shooting and editing video, particularly editing video on a phone, um, I, I don't really have that much experience. I've, I shoot videos on, um, on iPod touches, but then I edit them all on the computer. But, and it's a different way, it's like shooting, then editing, but it seems to be a bit more seamless, the whole thing together on a phone. Um, Sophie, my colleague at Planet, has um, a, lot of, a lot more experience in doing this, um, and so I, I begged her if she would be able to present, present this one to you as an alternative way of making films. Um, and I, I hate to say, sure, it might even end up being a cheaper way, but now that you've got a forked out for all that stuff. But we will, I don't think you'd do video in video, but the who cost knows? is covered by our big lottery grants. I don't know. <laughs> oh, there we are. Then. Yeah. Um, so, in that case, I will hand you over to uh, Sophie Jenkins. Um, Sophie, what project are you doing in, in Planet at the moment? Hello, Shmai. Hi, everybody. Um, so at the moment, I'm working on the Cristalli Heartlands Communities Project at Planet, which is a heritage project based around celebrating the history and culture of the Cristalli area. Uh, but I also work part time at uh, Brimbarian Community Centre as well. Um, so over the last year, um, as we all know, uh, we've had to rely on digital more than we have done before. And so I started kind of messing around with uh, putting short films together on my phone, which I'd never done before. I've done a lot of photography on my phone. I'm quite used to using my phone to do that with. But in terms of um, doing, using apps, I wasn't sure. I wasn't even sure you could do it. But um, I was kind of forced to, I suppose, because of the circumstances. So what I do I'll show you one of the quick, the really short little films I put together the project and I'll show you one of them quickly just for you to get a taste of what you can put together on your phone and then what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to just talk through the elements of the app, the specific app that I'm using um, but I think 
there's so many apps that regardless of whether you've got an Android phone or whether you've got um, an Apple phone, the same sort of principles will be on, on every app, I'd imagine. And it would probably be similar principles to what John has spoken, talked you through in terms of editing on a, on a laptop or a computer as well. So I'll just show you, can I sh screen share? Is it enabled? Cool. Yeah. Um, I'll just show you this one. Can you all see this? Shall yes. Yeah, cool. Um, no, I can't see anything. No? Nothing's come up. It says that you're sharing, but it, you haven't got anything on the screen. I'll wait a minute then. Oh, maybe. Ah, yeah, yeah, it's there. Cool. Okay. Um, let's see if it'll play then. Right, so quickly, I'll just, I, I didn't give you the context of that short video, but over the, the lockdown, I put together this Facebook group um, for um, personalities of the community to get together and they share pictures and things on Facebook. And it was really successful. We've had about 900 people join the group, but at that stage, we only had a couple of hundred people. So I wanted to try and get the message out there so that people knew what the group was about, even if they possibly hadn't used Facebook before. Um, so it's elements of that I actually filmed by uh, recording a Zoom session, so the scrolling of the of the Facebook page, I recorded it on Zoom with sh with screen share, and then I dropped it. I downloaded the file and dropped it into my phone. Anyway, what I'm going to do now is is I'm going to um, share the screen again, and I'm going to get on to the um, film editing using the app. So. Um, Let's have a look now. Um, can you all, is it all coming up for you? Yeah. Cool. Okay, so um, what I've been using is, is a Hawaii P30 phone. So nothing too flashy. It's not like the top of the range or anything, but it's got a good, good camera on it. Um, you can obviously, um, use a like iPad as well or a tablet I'd imagine but I haven't got experience using that personally um, but you can use essentially any any phone I, I probably could have done the same thing on one of my older phones too but possibly the quality of it would have been less um, so the the app that I use is cut um, app which is free to download on Android devices there's lots of other similar um, apps to be had um, to download on onto Apple devices. This is the best one that I found so far because I did try a couple of others before I settled on this one and this one is great because it says obviously in the in the description there there's no watermark so you can create something without it having like a, a sticker at the bottom because there's a similar app called InShot and it will do similar sorts of things. You have InShot at the bottom of your 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 video whenever you've finished ed editing it, which might not be a problem for some people, but if you'd like to have your own branding, then it's nicer to have one without a watermark. Um, iMote Movie is something that you can use, obviously, on an, on an, um, on an Apple um, device. I haven't used it myself, but from what I can see on the internet, it's quite simple to use. And I think all of the one I use may be sort of more advanced than some of the features on some of the other apps, but again, it's worth um, trialing out a few of them and seeing what fits for you basically because 
the app that I use may not not may not be suitable for you. It may not um, be as accessible to you. So try out a range of them. I would recommend because most of them are free. So I'll move on. I'll have to move my my little zoom icon out of the way somewhere because it's there. We go. Um, when you open up the app on your phone, so obviously to begin with, you would download the app from an app store. So usually I download it from something like Google Play, but you can download it from probably other um, sort of way. I don't know, where else can you download it from? Um, uh, I think if you've got like a Samsung phone, it might be like Samsung apps or something like that. So whatever you've got on your phone anyway. Um, so when you have downloaded it and you go and access the app on your phone, this is the this is where you'll this is the page you'll land on. So this is the kind of start. Um, so if you click on new project, that will take you to a completely new video. Um, so you can then go into your library of videos, and obviously you will have collected your footage beforehand, um, but not you know you don't have to worry if you haven't collected everything that you want to put in it you can make a start and go mm, I quite like that but I need some more footage of the hills nearby or I need uh, another interview from this person and you can go out and take those interviews and you can plop, plop them in afterwards um, but essentially you, you click what, what you want to put in and it will then take you into the main interface of the app so it's fairly simple and quite straightforward. Um, so this is kind of the undo and the redo uh, methods. If you make a mistake and you'd like to go back, that's, that's fairly straightforward that you can undo um, what you've just done. Um, this is the play button. So I usually recommend you kind of play play it back often so that you can see what you're what you're doing, what the process is as you're putting it together. Um, and you can also, um, I don't know if it says it on here. Oh yeah, I've got it there. Um, so if when you play it, you can also then um, choose to enter full screen or landscape view so that you can view the, the film, you know, in its entirety really, because if you press play there, it will play it as it is there quite small in, sort of landscape within the portrait of your phone. Um, you can also add free music um, and then that's the button to add more footage and pictures. Um, and then if you see here, I don't think I've actually marked this one, but you can unmute, unmute your clip. So if you're someone like me that takes lots of nice landscape videos but ends up breathing heavily in them, you might want to like mute yourself <laughs> when in those films and then you can put music you can overlay music on top of them um, so if you click on the bottom here on one of the one of the clips um, you get this bit then which um, you can then rearrange where you want your your videos to be your video clips um, and what I didn't mention also was is you can also add in obviously still images so still still photographs um, you can add those in as well um, so you can rearrange them then. So if you decide that you want want to bring it forward or whatever, then that's easily just you can drag them around. So that's the main interface that you're dealing with. Um, I'll come to this later, but this save button, you, you don't need to press save all the time. This save button is only for um, when you want to save it at the end and make the final copy of it. It saves everything automatically as you're going going through the, the editing process on this app. So this is also a handy uh, bit of it. So these are the main bits here, right? Um, but I'll, I'm going to go into some of these in more detail now, okay? Because um, you, you can kind of scroll past this as well and there's some more, more options. So the this is the changing the, the the size of the video format. So um, that is, it, it's, it's even got um, sort of Instagram or YouTube or, or, or TikTok so that you can orientate your videos to fit the specific app or, or purpose that you're trying to put it together for. So normally you go for um, sort of the YouTube um, standard and that 
helps as well because if you're putting in still images like this little image I've taken and it doesn't quite fit the the size of the video I want to do it it'll crop it for you so it, it'll all seamlessly um, kind of play in the video without having like gaps on the side or it looking it looking a bit funky really so it all kind of looks seamless and a bit more professional um, so that's quite a good um, a good bit to do and the main thing to obviously I'm sure John has spoken through this with you is that when you're taking video normally you want to take it in a landscape view um, so you take it this way around on your device you can obviously take it this way but um, I wouldn't recommend that as such if you're creating um, like content such as Instagram stories or possibly even Facebook stories you might want to orientate it this way because that's the way people play it on their phones um, so the next bit I'm going to talk about is filters and effects. So you may not want to um, put any filters or effects on what you're doing. You might want to just take the, the footage and just sort of stitch it together and it, I'm sure it will look brilliant. But some of these filters are quite interesting. So you can add sort of uh, more of a vintage style feel to a bit of um, film that you've taken or make it black and white to make it look more oldie worldy or something. Um, or there's lots of different sort of colours on this so that you can you can create an atmosphere or a certain vibe to whatever you're putting out there. Um, the effects one then is slightly different. So the effects is, um, for example, you can, so this one now is like, I think it's called um, Ghost. So you can kind of make the, make the, the the video kind of have this um, kind of like it, it. I don't. I can't. I don't know how to describe it without showing it to you, really. But it kind of has this extra effect on it, whereby it kind of um, kind of overlays the video, so it kind of looks more ethereal, I suppose. Um, but some of them on there are quite um, quirky. So I've used the effects such as having like a VSF, VHS or glitch effect so it looks like your film was made in the 90s basically like you're putting in a VHS tape, tape and it has the, the glitchy sort of and the fuzzy bits in it which you might not want to use throughout the whole the whole um, film but I've used it to break between clips just as an added bit of interest to, to make to make what you're putting together um, just have a little bit of a, a different spin on it really but as I said those aren't, those aren't, um, um, is also quite useful is changing the speed of video clips. So, um, again, I've used this for uh, making things look maybe more nostalgic. So if you want people to maybe be walking more slowly through a clip, you can, you can slow down the clip. Um, or if you want it to have maybe a bit more of a, comedic vibe you could speed it up so that it was going faster and I've even actually used it where say um, <laughs> I've recorded myself speaking and I think that I've gone through an element a little bit too fast which I'm I'm you know guilty of doing sometimes I can just tweak it so that I can slightly slow down um, the, the rate of the speed I'm speaking so that it just and it doesn't alter it too much it just kind of uh, evens it out a little bit so you can even do that um, but you can obviously it, 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 yeah there's lots of possibilities there so you can again it's, it's adding a bit of interest to your film um, or it's just a functional thing where you want the clip to be slightly shorter um, or you want something to happen in a, in a faster way or whatever it, it, it's, it's quite a good um, tool to use so this is what you use if you click on speed here it will alter the, the speed of the clip, which obviously will lengthen or shorten the clip depending on what you choose. So um, this is an interesting one and I would recommend doing this because it does um, give a nice effect to the, the video or the film you're putting together. So um, if, you, if you can see here, um, this is a, this is a, a clip that um, I haven't added a transition on. So if you click on between each clip, you'll have this, you'll have these. These are clips that I've already added. So they're kind of the, 
um, hourglass upside down um, on, its, on its side um, symbol. That means that I've had a, tra a transition effect between each clip, um, whereas this one I haven't yet. So you can decide to um, like blur the clips into each other so they kind of mix in nicely so that it's not like such a jolt. Or like the film that I just showed you, I had the clips kind of bouncing in and out of each other, which you know it's just it just kind of adds a bit of interest to it and, and makes it a bit more interesting. But there's lots of different ones. You can have them blurring in and out. You can have them, the clips spinning in and out of each other, which may make you a little bit dizzy. So I possibly wouldn't recommend that one. But regard, you know, depending on what you're doing, it might suit the project you're doing. Um, and then you can have them popping in and out, or you can have them sliding. Um, again, it just makes makes it look a bit more professional as well because it's it's adding that extra um, sort of interest to it. Um, so I would recommend you do that. That is a, a nice way of, of sort of adding a bit of a bit of a shine to what you're producing. I'm sure that John has probably gone through something similar with his his sort of conventional editing and you know in terms of editing between the clips. Um, so again, taken a clip um, and say you've taken this clip of the lovely Purcell landscape, and usually I've got my dogs with me and you're, you're panning the landscape and then suddenly you're like oh my god my dog's having a poo there i've already got it on the camera <laughs> and you want to edit that bit out then um you can do that easily on this app um and you can even split the the footage so that you can have i just want that bit of the film there and i want that bit of the film there but i'm not too bothered about that middle piece um you can do that easily um so yeah that that's a very useful um, a very useful way of, of trimming um, the clips before they've even, you know, you don't have to trim them before they've gone into the app, basically. You can do all of that inside of the app. So that is quite useful. Um, and you can also obviously trim out, say, for example, like interviewing somebody and um, you want to take out the kind of big pauses or something. You can do that and mix it into each other. And you can see them doing it on the TV where they, they can they've got someone talking and they kind of take separate clips and they sew them together and they can, it sort of presents a different feel to an interview rather than have it play all in one. So there's lots of different options there. Um, what's also quite interesting is, is you can um, record audio directly onto clips. So it might not be as good an audio quality as you would get from say um, the sort of audio recorders that I'm sure that John has showed you. Um, it's not like using a professional um, capture. Although if you were to set up your space to, to be um, more sort of soundproof, you could easily um, record yourself um, narrating a piece of video um, or whatever, and you can record it directly over. And it, it, it's, it's just an easy way of doing it without having to upload an extra a sound clip for it, which is easy to do too, but I think that's just a, it's an easy thing if you just wanted to um, add a bit of narration on top. So that's a, that's a function that you can also find in this app. Um, so this is something I use quite a bit of in the work that I do, because I've got to make everything bilingual. Um, so if I'm putting a film together, um, I usually have to put subtitles on it. Um, and that's really easy to do on this. Um, so this, where I'm showing you here, I'm adding a title to the film. Um, and there's lots of different options for this. So you can add, you can choose a, a specific font. So there's lots of different ones. You can, you can choose a more um, kind of standard one, or you can choose something that's a bit, bit sort of more playful. Um, there's, there's lots of different choices there. Um, you can also, um, add animation to the, the text as they come in. So like I described in adding animation um, and transitions between the clips, you can also choose how the text arrives on the screen. So um, again, you can get it to fade in or fade out, or you can get it to slide in. Uh, it all adds to that sort of production element of, of what you're putting together. Um, you can change the colour, you can add kind of a shadow behind it to make it sort of stand out. 
um, and you can you can see here that I've just I've just added that bit to the start of my video because I wanted to do the title. Um, but you can so what you can do then is you can you can type in your sub if you wanted to put subtitles in, type it in, and you can drag it then across as many slides as you want. Um, you know, if obviously if it's subtitles, you want it to sync in with what that person is saying. Well, that's easy, easily, easily enough done um, by by doing that. And as I said, if you keep playing back and forth, playing the video back, um, you can see then how that all fits in together. Um, so that is a really useful piece of this app, I would say, and it's 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 quite a user friendly way of adding subtitles. Um, so adding music, I haven't actually covered adding music yet. Um, John, did you did you talk about add, adding in um, YouTube music before? Yes, we did. We looked at the YouTube music library, um, and we we saw the the pros and cons of that. Actually, to yeah. be honest. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, following on from that, then that's what I have been using too. So. I can I can access that on my phone. I can download those audio files directly onto my phone, and I can upload them then directly to this app. Um, but as John has told you too, it's important when you're putting music into the app that you kind of try to um, sympathetically fade the music in and out of clips. Um, so. I would recommend that you fade it in and then fade it out. Um, so you've got that option here. Um, and it just, again, it, 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 it makes it less jarring if the music kind of gradually comes in. Um, and again, as it gradually goes out, it, it's, it's a bit more soothing than having music sort of jar at you within each clip. Um, and I think John has been a co convert to adding music, music to clips. Um, it, it does add an extra element to things um, and there's lots of different options obviously you can go for mega cheesy or you can go for something that's really atmospheric something that really doesn't actually interfere with what you're putting together too much it's just like a background noise that is is there um, and it doesn't doesn't sort of dis, dis, distract from what you're trying to put out there really so that's that's a that's an option for um, editing your music within the app um this is something that i've used quite a lot some people may not use it at all um but you're able to add a sticker within um within this app to your video um and in doing so then it can either be a logo or a watermark um so you can see here that if i add that i can if i've already got the image stored on my phone or if i've downloaded it then I can upload it straight then to this app and I can I can position it then wherever I want on screen. So I've positioned it here uh, at the top of the screen and I can ensure then if I wanted to that, that that watermark or logo is featured throughout the film. So, you know, you can ensure then that people know that it's you that's produced the film or it's your organisation um, that is forefront in what you're putting together. Um, but what's also interesting on here is, is um, you can go into like emojis on there, uh, which you might not want to use because some of them possibly not relevant. But uh, for example, I did put together a short film uh, last year to do with um, filming your favourite lockdown locations. Um, and I wanted to ensure that if people went out to film that they obviously abided by social distancing and regulations. So to kind of back up that fact, I actually got the emoji, which is the um, the triangle with the with the exclamation mark in it to, to say, right, warning, you know, I mean business. Um, so you're able to do that, which is interesting and it adds something to it. And I've even done it the other day because I've been filming um, some of the community in Brimberian uh, leading us on short walks around the community and to denote where uh, we started off from, I used the pin emoji so to say that we started off at the community centre. So um, there's lots of different ways and lots of different ways that you can be um, creative in what you're putting together. Um, it just, I think this app offers quite a lot 
in terms of that if you if you have a bit of a play with it um so yeah that is is useful and you, as i said it doesn't have to just be a logo it could be your own watermark and you can make it as small or as big as you want and as i said drag it along the 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 clips um so that you can have it just at the end or just at the start and fade in and out um so i'm pretty much at the end there really um i've gone through it pretty fast but i can go it go through it in more detail if anyone needs me to um so as I've said here, make sure you watch back your masterpiece regularly during the editing process to ensure you're happy with how it's all looking. So when I'm doing it, I'm constantly, I'm, I put a bit of a, an effect on a bit of the, the, the clip as I'm building it and I'm going, right, how does that look? How does that look? How does that fit with that? So you keep looking at it to see if you're happy before moving on to the next step. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, the app automatically saves all your edits as you're going. Um, so you don't have to worry about, you know, if someone rings you or whatever, that you're going to lose it. If it, it, will, it will automatically save everything. This main save button, as I described on the top here, is when you want to create the, the final master to download. So this is when, if you click on that, this comes up. Um, and that's the, that's the highest um, download that you can do. You can download it in, in lower quality but I wouldn't recommend it. I download it in the highest quality that you can really. And once it's downloaded onto your phone, you can either upload it straight to Facebook, YouTube, whatever from your phone, or you can use something like um, WeTransfer and because it'll probably be quite a bit large file and you can, um, you can send it then so that you can download it over your laptop so that you can take it, you can do whatever you want with it afterwards then. Um, what's also good about this is, is that you can, um, go, go back to the, to the, um, to the film, even after you've saved it and made the master of it, you can go back to your film as a project and you can make further edits or you can alter it so that you can use it for a different project or whatever. Um, so oh, if you notice any problems, cause sometimes I've downloaded it and I've, um, taken it so that I can look at it on my laptop and once I put it on my laptop I'm like oh god I didn't notice that I'd kind of not put that transition in properly or that looks a bit wonky so I can go back into my phone then and I can edit it again and I can I can save it to a high quality again then um, and within this within the app um, I don't know if it's here it's along this menu anyway if you scrolled along this menu there is a Q&A se section which is quite um, interesting so you can either go through a tutorial or you can you can go through the frequently asked questions and there's lots there about some of the things I've mentioned about how to merge videos how to add transitions how to trim the video um, adjust the order of the clips um, adjust video speed etc um, yeah so and the main thing is actually what I found out it was a lot of fun to do it this way so um, I enjoyed it a lot so I'm going to stop talking for a minute now and maybe we can have some questions. Have you ever, I, I was looking at that Premiere Rush um, and there was something that Shirley said about getting Premiere Pro um, and that with some of your, um, like your phones, like I'm using the iOS one, the Apple one, um, in that if you have forked out for all the Adobe things, that they will all work together. Um, the other one that I used on the Apple was Power Director, but the iMovie is pretty good on that as well, on, on the phone. Um, yeah. So, Sophie, um, I'm yeah. sorry, I had to take a call just as you started. Which, which um, program, which app were you using for it? Um, I'll go on it again, um, so you can see what it is. It's um, it's the it's called UCut. So this this app is that that's Android. Yes. Yeah, this is Android. Yeah, so it's essentially spell it almost like like YouTube, I suppose. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, that's the one that I've used. I have tried a couple of other ones like. Um, like in shot 
Um, I can't remember the other one, but like, as I said, to begin with, the reason why I chose this one is because I had a bit of a play with it, but the, like, there was also no watermarks involved in it from the app itself, so I could make it my own, basically, which was nice. Um, Lena, did you have a question? Yeah, just a small one, and I can probably check it. I think it sounds really good, actually. I'm going to have a go. Um, we tend, we have um, a special font that we use within SolverCare. And I just wondered if you've come across whether you, whether it's in there, it's not a very common one, or whether one could upload it somehow. You might be able to. I haven't looked that far into it, to be honest. Um, you might be able to add one. Um, mm. Let me have a look now. Um, yeah, that, that definitely you could do that on the computer. Mm. Um, but uh, yeah, apps are a bit more closed as far as what. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. I mean, it's not utterly and totally essential. It would just be nice if one could, because we use some. Yeah. It's going to be consistent as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, I don't know if you can do that because they've got like there's only a certain amount of, of yeah. text, here. and you may because that I'm using the free version. You can pay. I think I don't know how much it is. Use the pro version. Because there's okay. certain elements, I don't think I explained that in, in in my presentation, but there's certain effects and and filters that are pro filters basically. So that if you were paying for, I don't know, I said I'm not sure how much it is to pay for the pro, yeah. but you you get them. Then. So it could be similar um, with the apps. Um, it could be a similar sort of thing um, with uh, with the text. Sorry, with the fonts. So if you mm. were to pay, you might have more options. Yeah, uh, I'll have a look at it. Sounds sounds pretty good. Otherwise, I thought. Yeah, it says yeah. You can download more fonts. Um, oh. Um, there's lots on here. Actually, I haven't been on here. There's apps. Oh my god, there's loads of free ones on here that I haven't used. Ah. There's lots Is of it. Is app free, Sophie? Is it free to add more app uh, fonts? Apparently, yeah. It says import your fonts, and it's got loads on there. Oh, um, ah. Lots right. of free ones, and you can just go because there's some of them that are in different like language fonts. If you just go to English, there's lots of interesting ones there. Okay. Um, but I don't know, I don't know where these are uploaded to, and whether you could upload your own. Is there what is? Do you know what's the name of the font? Oh, we use something called Bliss Pro. Bliss Pro. Yeah, it might be on there, but it it, it doesn't tend to be a normal. No, 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 no. But um, yeah, it's worth a look anyway because it's yeah, no, choice no, it's, from it. sounds pretty good. Yeah. Tell, tell me, Sophie, did I miss it or did you say what uh, format it saves the files in? Is it MP4? Uh, MP4? Yeah, I think it's an MP4. Yeah, I think that's what I've got here. Um, the one you sent to me was MP4. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I think it is an MP4. Um, yeah. I don't know if you can. Um, I don't think it offers offers you anything different, to be honest. Well, that's pretty universal, isn't it? You know. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so yeah, but as I said, universal. So most things will will accept it. Any other questions? Um, so I know I went through it pretty quickly. Oh, I know got that another one. <laughs> when you, I noticed on your film, you obviously had quite a lot of stills, but you also had some uh, movies. Did you use a stand or something? Because the only thing with the camera, I think, is holding it still, isn't it? That can kind of. Yeah. Um, well, John has got these little gimbals that he uses so that you can basically attach your phone like this, basically, so that you can hold it that way. Mm. Um, to be honest, I haven't found it too hard just using it like this. If you if you manage this, this if it's windy, then you'll have a problem. Yeah. Um, but if you're if you're just doing landscapes, it's not too bad. But obviously, if you're interviewing someone, you mm. can get a gimbal which has it like a tripod on it as well, so you could basically set it up. Yeah. Yeah. John. Yeah. Um, I was just going to say, uh, there's some something that I saw Span Arts doing, which I'm definitely going to pinch. Um, for they were taking pictures, for, actually for making um, uh, um, oh, uh, animations. Um, oh yeah, from above, John. And, yeah. yeah, and basically it looked like a stool, 
um, with short legs, but the, the, the seat of the stool was, was perspex. Um, and so you put that on top of the um, stop frame animation. You put that on top of the, the book or whatever you want to take a picture of, and you just put your camera on top of that. And so it was perfectly level, um, a really nice low tech way of, of doing that. Um, and you just pressed it. Yeah, they did it with the iPads actually, not, not yeah. phones, but the same I think thing they actually did it film about doing that because I think they wanted over lockdown I think they wanted children to or I don't know if it was just children um to create like short stop animation films and I think they showed them how to do it with this with this sort of setup that John is describing which is quite quite interesting yeah, yeah it, it just worked really well yeah. and it didn't you could just make one yeah um can I, can I cut in? Um, it, would that be okay? Uh, I, I just wanted to show, like, um, with, with, there's something, Shirley, Shirley, you asked about um, doing uh, the, the, the sign language, um, a, a frame yes, in frame. frame, in frame. Um, yeah, can I, uh, Mar Maria, can I, can I, would you be able to make me a co-host so I can show Shirley and everybody else? Please. There we are. Um, Shirley, I had a look at what you do. And so this is in, um, this is in um, Premiere Pro, but this is the same. So I basically, like we had it before in Premiere Pro where you can do, you can have your video yep. Yep. Um, and put that. Um, and then if you want another video, you can put another video on top. So let's say for example, I've got this, but there you are. So I've got him to, so there's, I've got a video within a video. Is that what you wanted? Yes, yes it is. Yeah, basically, yeah, you put one video on top of the other one. And then over at the side here, you can choose scale and you can change the scale. Um, if, if it's not too boring for everyone else, do you want me to show you how to do it? Yes, please. <laughs> Right. Um, yep. so yes, please. Do, yes, I will do it. So this is for anybody who wanted to do sign language or anything else. So I've got a picture of, so here's my, I've, I've got a, this is one clip yep. going there. And I've got another clip up here. And if I drag that clip on top, right. I just, drop it down a wee bit there so now if i put like that well of course that clips exactly the same size as the one underneath so it just replaces it right okay but if i highlight that and then i go up here into this corner and choose effect controls sorry i can't oh there right yes yeah and then there's the little image here if i click on that that says it what the name of the file and you get all this horrible if you click around and you get this horrible list of things mm -hmm. can you see i've got scale yeah i can put the scale smaller you could also zoom in so the other scale was bigger and then i'm going to click on position and i can move this around now i've i've not chosen a very good one i've got grass on top of grass but it just shows that. So now yeah. it will play, but it doesn't take up the whole screen. No, so that's if perfect. You, <laughs> if you, yeah, if you recorded your person doing their signing at a separate time um, and, then, and then played it at the, and imported it, you could change it and have it one on top of the other. And now that you've got that in there, you could, of course, with your video effects, have um, not video effects, video transitions. Um, we can just have it so that it goes in nicely in and out. So it's not, so this is what Sophie was talking about with just having, so you don't have a jarring, so you'll just fade in. And then um, he's going to fade out. So you can do all of those transitions as well, just because it's a, a clip. Okay. And of Thank course, you. yeah, and you could have subtitles or whatever on top of that. 
Yeah. So, sorry, Sophie, I butted in, but I was oh, well, just really <laughs> I was really, I was I chuffed that I'd managed to do it. But I don't yeah. think you can do that on on the on the Ether app. Um, but it reminded me that what you can do is, is you can, like I was describing, putting these stickers on, and you can obviously put actual pictures on the screen to say, um, for example. <clears throat> the film that I was taking the other day about the, the Bloomberg community doing a walk around the, the village. Um, we were going around and we were looking for wildflowers and there's a bit where, where um, Sandra from the community is talking about the wildflowers that they've, that we've, we've found and we've spotted during the walk. And the pictures that I took, I kind of just like, I kind of just featured them on screen around her and kind of faded them in and out. Um, so you've got lots of different options there. It's just kind of, it's worth playing with what you're doing um, because there's lots of things I probably haven't even discovered that I could do on the app. The same as probably John always finding new bits and pieces that he can do um, on on the on the actual using a, a program on your computer as well. I think the other thing, Sophie, that we found is that we were both working with. Um, uh, making another film up with uh, the, the Cardibach Railway. Um, and we used really fancy, a fa fancy video camera for that and uh, microphones and all the sorts. And luckily, Emmy, who, who we were uh, filming, was um, quite happy, ex-headmaster, happy to talk in front of people um, and was really good at presenting. Um, but whether you're going to edit on your phone or on the computer, I find it's a lot less intrusive if you've got a camera, just, just holding one of these up um, and you can be talking to it. And it's just, uh, people seem a little bit more at ease if you're going to be using a phone. Um, the cam On the other side of it, the footage that we got of Emir on the Cardi back was lovely. I mean, really nice. I mean, you do. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was it was really really high quality stuff. But yeah, what John is talking about is if you've got if you've just got a, if you've just got this even on a tripod and you're like you're interviewing somebody, I'm sure they would almost forget that it was there. Um, so you know, whereas if you had a big camera pointed in your face, you can't really forget that you're being filmed. <laughs> so there's pros and cons to to each really. And and those those shots actually Shirley that I showed with um, the grass and then um, Mike actually talking there um, the shot they shot that was done on an iPod touch so it, again not really fancy equipment um, the, the expensive bit and the tricky bit was the editing afterwards it's it's Premiere Pro and and having to deal with all that sort of stuff but actually taking the shots and um, and videoing it uh, actually, no, no. The other expensive bit was the uh, the, the wireless microphones because um, they're about two hundred pounds. But again, they worked and it was nice and clear. It helped a lot that again, Mike Parker Pearson. He's a professor. He's hand. He can talk, and it just it's much. It makes it much much easier um, if you're shooting somebody straight on. But like the videos that Sophie's just shown you. It's a completely different way. Yours is voiceover, and it's not shooting people face to face. Yeah, so there's lots of there's lots of different options. It depends what you want to put together, really. Whether you want it just to be like a, a load of clips put together, and then you just narrate it, and then you can you can obviously control that yourself because you can do that in the comfort of you know your house or or wherever. Um, yeah. Whereas it can be obviously a bit more difficult when you're out and you're recording certain people and you've got to take it there and then. Um, like what I did the other day when I was filming um, the guys in the village walking, uh, if because I was getting them because we've put we were putting together this leaflet of, of walks, so I kind of wanted them to say right, I'm going to go left now over the style. So I just sometimes take the clip twice to make sure that. Um, it was okay in case there was some sort of sound interference or something like that. Um, but they they reacted very well actually just to having a phone do it. I think again, I don't think it was very intrusive. They they didn't know whether I was taking it or not because I was holding it up. They mm. they they were quite comfortable with it. Um, I tell you one thing again, working with Sophie that we were making another film 
um, the, the, the one up um, for the drug gun, where I, I was doing the interview with um, uh, Thomas from the National Park. And then I look around and Sophie's away taking pictures of like streams or rocks or whatever. It can help if there's two of you, because I could then concentrate on the uh, on the actual interview. But then the little bits. you've got a lot of footage so it just made me think when you said you took the photo you took it twice um if you take loads of shots all around then you've got a lot of elastoplasts to sort of hide the clips sort of going together the other thing that i would like to sort of finish on really and, and I, i'm sure sophie would agree is that when I first started doing this job with, with Planet, I, I didn't make films, I didn't do it. But the reason I do it is, first of all, it's much more engaging for your communities. Um, and the people, you can write about what you do, you can bullet point it, you can do links to things, but a film, a little film clip, and at the end of the day, people are just lazy. If, if you want to read the text, you can read the text, or you can just watch the little film and it'll do it all there. Um, and for the other thing I find is um, funders like it um, in that if you can do that, stick their logo on at the end um, and then say, put it on social media, whether you like social media or Facebook or, or not is, is by the by, it's just, it gets your project out there and people see it and, and film is just the way people seem to be doing it. Um, and, and if and most people I think would be looking at it on a phone or a tablet so shooting it on a phone or a tablet it just fits i don't know what you would think about that sophie yeah no i agree a lot of the time you know when i'm kind of in the evening scrolling having a look at you know what's 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 going on on the socials or whatever then you know i am usually looking on my phone i'm not i'm not usually on my laptop or my work laptop so yeah i agree i think a lot of the time you know you're not you're not creating a like a a Steven Spielberg epic or anything um so I'm so that you know that's why I you know if I was I'd be doing John's job because you know that I leave that to him but um if you're if you're putting together something that is for your communities and you want it to engage people that look fun and engaging you can do that really easily just on a device without spending a lot of money basically um and just practicing yeah. And saying that, I mean, the films that you've done, the films that I've done shot on phone cameras, we've had them blown them up onto the side of, you know, the Merlin Theatre or whatever. And they, they stand up. It, yeah, it's, they the, hold quality, yeah. Yeah, um, the, the quality of the cameras on, on, on these devices are now so good. Um, so are, are there any questions for myself or Sophie? That we haven't already covered. Uh, just said I just downloaded it now on my phone, and it looks really user friendly. So yeah, looking forward to having a go. The, the free version has got the odd advert on it, but that's what you expect when you download it—a free ad. And you can, there's always a cross in the corner to get rid of whatever they're trying to sell you. Um, but I don't find it too bad. There's nothing that's in your face that's that's. Um, is disrupt, you know, disruptive to, to what you're trying to do. So, uh, yeah, and it's the best way is, is, you know, no one showed me how to use the app. I just went in and, and just messed around with it until I created something, basically. So you can do that lots of times. You can go out in the garden and just take take videos of the, of the flowers or whatever, and you can stitch it together and just create a, a short film about nothing to begin with, almost. Um, you know, don't, you don't have to, you don't have to do you have to put together an amazing film to begin with. Just just start by just interviewing random mm. people or yeah, just, just take footage to begin with and then see how it fits together. And, and just to be clear, Sophie, those adverts don't appear in the final film. No, no, no. no. They're just on the app. They're, They're just on the app, yeah. That's you know, if 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 you pay for the the pro version, which I'm not sure how much it is or what what it is like for example now that's that's going through my drafts and you can see it's just got an advert like at the top or like a youtube ad so it's not it's not too bad it's just um it's it's nothing too intrusive 
I was just going to ask, I think you said obviously you could add free music. I presume you can download music from your own library if you've got something you're allowed to use? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, you can do that. And you can obviously um, you can download your own audio as well. So, for example, there you had taken an audio clip uh, using another device. You can download that if you had it as an MP3 or something and you can put it on there. I just had a look, by the way, um, for, for if you wanted to you cut um, premium to unlock all features. And um, it's for a one time purchase, it's eleven ninety nine, which is pretty cheap. I don't know why I haven't bought it yet, to be honest. <laughs> uh, and but, but you can you can try the seven days free trial and then it's 4 99 a year so it's whatever you fancy doing really so okay. it's um yeah worth giving it a go yeah i've just downloaded it too <laughs> cool i'll have a go i've got some old clips i think i might do what you said just try and put something together with what i've got we've got some events that i want to promote and put on facebook and things and that's going to have a cool yeah, no. <laughs> uh, yeah actually sophie how long does it take you to make say a, t a, a, a one minute video for example now last week i went out on um I went out on Tuesday morning and did and was took the, the walk took like three hours, much longer than what it normally would have taken. So from ten until about one, I was out filming, and then I pretty much put the whole of the films together, which is about six minutes long. I haven't added the subtitles yet, but that probably took me about maybe two two hours, maybe, and I was doing a bit of faffing with it. If I'd wanted to add the subtitles as well, I'd have probably added another hour onto it. Um, so that's not very long, yeah. though. It's you know, so for an even yeah. shorter film, you you could possibly put one together in half an hour. How long yes. would you make yeah. one if you just wanted to promote something quite quickly on Facebook or or something? Would you do a minute, minute and a half, something like that? Yeah. Yeah, thirty seconds okay. to a minute. Yeah, nothing more than two minutes, I'd uh -huh. say. Okay. Yeah. No, 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 okay. no. Yeah. yeah. No, PCC, okay. are doing, PCC are doing some videos at the moment, apparently, and they're doing two versions. So 30 seconds to go on social media and two to three minutes if, they're, if someone is looking for them and looking to find them on YouTube or on their website. So they're okay. doing two versions. Yeah. Attention spans are coming down, apparently. <laughs> Sounds like it. <laughs> but a lot of the time on certain social media, I can't remember what happened to me on Facebook, um, like clips play automatically without people even clicking on them. So sometimes it's it's good, even if you are intending on doing a clip just in English, um, and I'm sure a lot of you would do this anyway, but I would even subtitle it um, in English just because if people are listening to it with no sound, because a lot of the time someone actually might be scrolling through in work or in a public space and they don't want to be like, you know, kind of, they don't want people to know what they're listening to or they don't want to, to sort of interfere with other people. So if you've got it subtitled, then people can access that video without having to even use the sound on it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So, and any more questions yeah. for, for Sophie or John? Because we're pretty much at our time. But uh, <laughs> nothing. Lovely. Well, thank you so much, both of you, and thank you, everyone. Yeah, thank for you. Hope you found it really helpful and interesting. I know I certainly did. Um, yeah. Yeah. It has been. Great. And as before, if you don't mind, I'm just going to fire around a little feedback form, which would be helpful to us. And also to give a little plug to, we've got the last of this series of masterclasses happening ne next um, next Wednesday at, I think it's Wednesday, 10 in the morning. It's the 12th anyway, 12th of May. Um, so uh, if you'd like to join those, just go and send me a quick email and I'll add you to the list. I know a couple of you on the call have already. So um, that's great. Thank you very much, everyone.
Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Yes, thank you very much. Bye. 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 Bye.